In this example, we want to find general solutions and sketch phase portraits for two different linear constant coefficient systems of two differential equations. So we can start with our first one here, and for all of these, the process all starts the same. We first need a general solution, and from that we can make a sketch. So general solution first, and so for this first one, we're going to start by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So for the eigenvalues, the determinant of a minus lambda i is given by 0 minus lambda minus 4 minus lambda plus 4 lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4 which is lambda plus 2 squared that's a repeated eigenvalue with eigenvalue negative 2. So for this eigenvalue if I add 2 on the diagonal I will see 2 2 minus 2 minus 2 which means a possible eigenvector here is 1 minus 1 and I only found one eigenvector, so I have to go through the generalized eigenvector approach to find a second solution. So I want my w vector, which is going to solve a plus 2i w equals v, or in matrix form, 2, 2, minus 2, minus 2, equals 1, minus 1. That matrix goes here, and this vector goes here. So what do I get from that? Well, the rows will cancel because they're the same to a minus sign, and so I'm left with 2w1 plus 2w2 equals 1, or the vector that I'll work here is 1 half and 0, w1 is 1 half, w2 being 0. So from that I can write my general solution, which here looks like x of t is c1 eigenvector, which was 1 minus 1, e to the minus 2t, plus c2 times the complicated term, 1 minus 1, t e to the minus 2t, plus 1 half 0, e to the minus 2t. All right, now how do we sketch this? What does this look like? Well, we can think about this term first. This is our straight line solution. So it has 1 minus 1 for its coordinates, so it's going to be a y equals minus x line. And because that is a negative exponent on there, it's going to be pointing in towards the center. This will be our improper nodal sink. So the other thing to figure out is now, which way does it hook around? It's going to hook somewhere. Which way is it going to hook? And so to do that, we can look at the second solution here and rewrite this as e to the minus 2t times t plus a half negative t. That's combining the factors together, putting the t inside the first one. Now, if t is 0, we are at 1 half and 0, which means we are somewhere around here. As t gets really, really big, looking at just the part in here, this will be in quadrant 4, because the first coordinate is positive and the second is negative. So as t gets bigger, I'm in quadrant 4. Since my entire solution converges in towards 0, it's an improper nodal sink. It has to do so in quadrant 4. It's going to spin around this way in towards the center, and so the hook backwards will come out in that direction. And the mirror image happens on the other side. That is your improper nodal sink, and that's what the sketch would look like here. Another way to check this is by looking at the matrix itself. So to get the rotation out of the matrix itself, we want to look at this bottom left entry here. Because that entry is negative, we know that the phase portrait will show a negative rotation. And since counterclockwise is always positive for rotations, that means we're going to see a clockwise rotation here. And so, you can look at this and see that on both sides, the rotation is in a clockwise direction. It starts up here and it rotates around this way. So this sort of rotation is clockwise, and that's what we're seeing for this graph here, is a sort of clockwise twist in the way that it rotates. It doesn't fully rotate, it's an improper sink, it's not a spiral. We do still get, in each case, a clockwise directionality here to this rotation. So bottom left negative means clockwise, also top right positive means clockwise, but negative feels better because for normal rotations, counterclockwise is positive, so that sort of helps with the scenario. All right, now let's look at our second example here, which we can start in the exact same way, but finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Determinant a minus lambda i equals negative 4 minus lambda minus 2 minus lambda plus 2 is lambda squared. That is plus 2 plus 4 is plus 6 lambda. 
plus 8 plus 2 is plus 10. So I'm going to be 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 40 over 2 is going to be 3 plus or minus i. Negative 3 plus or minus i because there's minus i at 6 there. This is going to be a spiral sink because the real part is negative and it's a complex eigenvalue. So we'll start with a general solution and then work from there. We just need the eigenvector. So lambda equals minus 3 plus i. A minus lambda i will equal negative 1 minus i, negative 1, 2, 1 minus i. Multiply the first row by negative 1 plus i to see what happens. And if we do that, we will get 2, negative 1, negative 1 plus i, 2, 1 minus i, and those are the same. So we're good, which means we get an eigenvector here as 1 minus i and minus 2. From that eigenvector, we can write a general solution. Starting with the complex solution, 1 minus i and minus 2, e to the minus 3 plus i t. We can expand out using Euler's formula, and then distribute through and simplify. We can then write the general solution by splitting out the real and imaginary parts here. We get c1, e to the minus 3t. The real part here will be a cosine of t plus sine of t, a minus 2 cosine of t on the bottom, d2, e to the minus 3t. On the measure part, we have a sine minus cosine, and a negative 2 e to the minus 3t sine of t on the bottom. All right, so we're going to see a spiral sink. How do we sketch this? But we can start by just trying to plot out these two curves and see what we get. I draw some axes here. Let's look at this solution first, the C1 term. At t equals 0, that is at positive 1, negative 2. So it's somewhere around here. Now, the first place that the y coordinate is 0, since that term is cosine of t, happens at pi over 2. At pi over 2, sine is 1. And so at t equals pi over 2, we are at 1 comma 0, but scaled by e to the minus 3 t, e to the minus 3 pi over 2. So it's going to be 1, 0, but further in this way. And that's the first time the solution hits 0 in the y direction, so it's the x-axis. And so this graph has to curve around this way, and hook in like this to spiral in towards the origin. It has to go from the first dot to the second one. It has to spiral in that direction to make that work properly. Similarly, the second curve, we do the exact same thing. At t equals 0, we are at negative 1, 0. Since we're already at y equals 0, we can think about the point where the x coordinate will be 0, which is when sine equals cosine, we're at pi over 4. And at pi over 4, we're at 0, comma, negative root 2 over 2 times 2 times e to the minus 3 pi over 4. It's going to be on the negative y-axis coming in towards the center. So we get, again, the same direction of rotation, which we have to get. If we go the opposite way, we're going to get spirals that cross the other many times, and they can't cross because solutions are unique in this scenario. We get a spiral state that looks like this, where things are spiraling in in a counterclockwise direction. Now, could you tell from the matrix? Yes, we could have. Let's go back to the matrix again. We can focus again on the bottom left term. Because that term is positive, we can see a positive rotation or a counterclockwise rotation here, which in fact is what we see out of this thing. It's a spiral sink, it's spiraling towards the center, but it's doing so in a counterclockwise direction. There's two examples of how you can general solutions and sketch phase portraits for spiral sinks and improper nodal sinks, both of these sort of spiraling and twisting kind of solutions for linear constant coefficient systems and differential equations with two components.